Hello, your magnificent human being. Today we will start what I hope will be the first of a mini series of educational reviews. We will start with what I think is one of my favorite game sagas, Civilization. We are going to go through the different mechanics of the game. Hopefully we'll review some that are educational and we will talk about those that are less educational. And at the end, I'm going to talk and do an overview a score on the educational value for the game. So let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do in Civilization is select one of the many civilizations available. Each one of the civilization does have a characteristic character that represents their nation. So for example, I'm original from Spain, and for Spain we have Philip II. Each civilization does give you certain units only available for them. So Civilization VI, it's a grand strategy game. You play by turns and it's tail based. In Civilization, you need to play turns by doing different kind of actions. Some of them will involve actually building different buildings in one of your cities. Other of them involves being able to select, move and attack other units through the tiles. Understanding how the tile system works, how the buildings works, and even how to build districts to be able to power one small tile to another one can give you some context on how discrete mathematics works. And even though you don't need to have a deep understanding on how the graph theory system works and, you know, discrete mathematics mechanics, learning them might be useful if you want to play in the top tier competitive mode. But overall, um, playing Civilization is not going to be educational by itself. Um, you can change the whole historical context for something like a space context, and the play gameplay will be exactly like that. So here we can see a zoom in game, and I need to say, this for a grand strategy game looks amazing. So one of the most important things in Civilization is your technology tree. This is how your Civilization might evolve from simple stick warriors to machine guns and sciencey things and how Gandhi actually developed nuclear bombs to throw to everyone. So for example, right now I developed Ancient Era and I've been able to research pottery, animal husbandry, mining. These are technologies that allows humans to start building more and more sophisticated uh, civilizations. One of the things I really enjoy about civilization is that you can right click on any anything actually and open the Civilopedia, which gives you not only extra information about the mechanics of a certain system, but also this entry of historical context. And this is how you can associate real life uh, historian context with the game mechanics. Another important tree is the civics tree. It's more related to sociology and philosophy and how the different ideologies of human have evolved. So just like technology, it does give you extra buildings and even these things named policies that allows your civilization to get some bonuses. I want to pause for a second and talk about these little government systems. Through the civics tree, you will unlock different government styles. So for example, the first thing that you need to unlock is political philosophy and gives you the option to develop three kinds of government system, autocracy, oligarchy and classical republic. Depending which political philosophy system you decide to run, you are going to have different slots available. So for example, if you, I selected classical republic instead of oligarchy, 
I will have an extra economic slot, but I will lose my military policy. And these are actually a very good reflection, because as the eras advance, you unlock new systems like monarchy or theocracy. And once you unlock the industrial era, there are these three branches that is more associated with modern history, democracy, fascism, and communism. Another factor that we need to account of is how civilization forced to understand resource management. If you click on the city details, you will need to be able to leverage food consumption, growth, you need to understand how the tiles might flood, how volcanoes might affect your tiles, how you can distribute and focus citizens to work in different resources. Also, in the latest expansion of Civilization VI, they introduced this world climate concept where you need to be aware of not only how much contamination your civilization is producing, but also leverage the contamination of other civilizations and try through diplomacy or even war uh, create a deterrent to not screw up. So the first category that I'm going to score civilization with is gonna be overall polish. Polish of the game considering that it's a multi-million game played by so many persons and put so much time I feel it deserves something around 9 over 10, becoming probably one of the most polished grand strategy games in the market right now. For the overall gameplay as well, they put a lot of careful details. So I'm gonna put an 8 over 10, still becoming a very strong game to play by itself. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the educational value. And this is where things get tricky, because it's true. You will learn a lot of historical context, and you can argue that you will have tangential education through the gameplay of civilization, but in reality, the core mechanics of the game are not really educational. And you can go and play the game without really get into the historical context and go and win it. No problem, you can ignore the whole history part. So because of that, because the game is not educational, really focus on education, the game mechanics does not require you to know a lot of history to play, the educational value score is just gonna be a 4 over 10, which is still very strong considering civilization at its core is not really an educational game. 